It is interesting that the, some of the lawmakers re-elected for the 9th Assembly, present in this 8th Assembly, are already talking about uh, beg your pardon, uh, electoral amendment. They were very dissatisfied with the process, and lawmakers now feel that there is no way we can go on like this. So maybe some of them are victims. Maybe they are now saying they need... Uh, some, some of the proposals that they are making, though, you know, would raise quite a bit of question. They think that the powers of INEC should be reduced. They think that INEC is, is getting too powerful, so to speak. Uh, but then there are a lot of other issues, it would seem, uh, that are bothering their minds. How quickly do you think or how early do you think that uh, this question of amending the Electoral Act should be prioritized? How early do you think it should if you take a look at how bulky the Electoral Act is as at this moment, and then the um, constitutional amendments on an election alone, it's frightening. So it is more issue of attitude, let me say that, than the law. But there are causes anyway or need to take a review. But I think we need an independent review, a holistic review of this law that will now lead to what? To a legislative action. Take it away from the legislature. Maybe uh, have a committee that involves um, advanced legal studies, Nigerian law reform, and then committee of experts. If there are international input, it may equally broaden it. To so take a critical look at this, and then from there, now have a legislation that we enable us have what? An independent uh, INEC. You remember this uh, INEC initially, it was on, uh, uh, let me say more or less, piecemeal appointment of the members. We were shouting, some of the states have no rec then. Later it came up. And it has a regular feature of these inconclusive elections. We never had it before, but it has now become what? An entrenched feature of this particular INEC. So we have to do the needful. Is it by the having INEC? Mr. Kechukun was very, he, he seemed to be pretty kind to INEC. He, he says INEC cannot take all the blames. He thinks that the blame being heaped on it is not exactly it to carry. Uh, that there were security infractions, for instance, that was outside the purview of INEC. What was it to do under the circumstances if it couldn't hold elections or that violence disrupted polls in certain areas? You've talked about attitude. Doesn't that fall under attitude? Well, it falls under attitude that there is what? Well, there is a regulator, and the regulator must shown um, to be independent and uh, genuine. So that's why I feel that INEC, when it was time of uh, FEDECO, we called up their whiskey. When it came to NEC, even Humphrey Moss, who was online as well, we called Gobadia. We called Maurice, who to tomorrow. So let nobody take away the blame from where it is. If you have made up your mind to take such a public responsibility, like I told you in my introductory tradition, that it talks about what? Public trust in the institutions of the country. Mm -hmm. And that is what? That is our mirror now to the world. If you take a look at the African setting, South Africa and Ghana, even with Liberia, are ahead of us in electoral issues by what we have performed within 2019. So the issue is this. Initially, Cadrida we thought would be the way out. But you have seen that there are still other drawbacks. And I have always said, why wouldn't we declare these results at the polling units? And then within the local government, call it for each of the states. It is the same INEC, it is the same regulator. We watched in 2015. For hours, Professor Jaga was collating the election with one assistant. We went, went through the same issue this year. We will continue this way. So the issue is this. If you have developed to be an institution, a regulatory body, yes, let the result, because there are party agents, there are observers. So let them take it from there, and then you collect at the center. They are all there on ground. And then the political parties as well should be able to cooperate and help issues. Yeah, but for the sake of transparency, even mm. though it raises questions as to what INE can do at the spot when people allege infractions, when people say, would you not agree with those results? Or this happened to me while I was trying to collate results. Or when people say, I had to announce a particular result under duress. Uh, these are circumstances that we have seen come up you know, with uh, INEC or 
No, yeah, we, we have always seen I, this. I officials. We have always seen this mm -hmm. issue, but no person has been brought to book. You remember the Senate, contest, uh, the Senate contest between uh, Ngige and late Akonyelo yeah. in Anambra do, State. Do Akonyele, yeah. Yes. The INEC uh, returning officer came out and said that he was even uh, uh, under duress of taking some amount of money and then a house, that he refused to do that one and then. And then did any person bring him to book to question that? So this is the issue. I have said, yes, Jega felt he would go back to his constituency by bringing professors to be returning officers. Now we have seen that the, that has not solved the problem. So we will be able to solve the problem by the regulatory bodies. And now the role of the military in the election has to be equally be defined. And when they are still there, then we still have issues of violence. Then it makes a, a no meaning of, of what the security level is. The and at what I, point will you invite them yeah. to be a part of the election? The question I was going to ask you had to, you know, do with whether INEC was, you know, has a role, more than a role to just announce election results because some people say that if it takes any other decision apart from just listening to the results that have been declared wherever it was that they were declared regardless of the circumstances uh, that the chances are high that it will not be constituting itself into a tribunal of some sort uh, but some people say no it will be doing its work as an administrative body and that if INEC is able to take decisive action where irregularities have been pointed out and you know there is some punitive measure for those areas then INEC might not, you know, the, the, the chances of our process going to the tribunals will be reduced and that people will have more faith in the process. Where do you stand on this? The issue is that uh, conduct of election is the responsibility of the INEC. And in conducting the election, there are some powers it has, which it has to use. But what we are saying is transparency and fairness in doing that. That is just the issue. So when somebody goes out of the law, who invited the military? Who have you asked that question? Then now on what occasion, at what level will you invite the military to come in? If there is no... If we're talking about military, no, INEC has said very clearly that they did not invite the military to coalition centers. They stated who that what they wanted the military to do was help them with logistics and that the military performed that role. They did not talk about the military being, I mean, of course, security agencies were invited. They said there is a joint body for security agencies, but they stated very categorically that the police is in the lead of security agencies and that they did not need military at the coalition centers. So, I mean, the, who, who invited the, the military is still out there, but that's what INEX says. Yeah, that is the INEX uh, part of it, because uh, every other person who have witnessed violence in the election will tell you that there is room really for security but the issue is at what point will you invite them to help when you have clear and present danger then emergency is coming in then they can come in then what is their role and where there are now serious allegations of there being a part of the electoral process we've seen it before not even before the apc if you remember the akt election then which provoked the governorship election which provoked a very big uh, uh, uproar of the involvement of the military now, how was that settled? So these are the issues. If you take one issue and conclusively bring it to bear, then people will learn their lesson. And from there, whoever becomes a victim, if you invite another person tomorrow, he will know that either his job or his life is at stake because he will go to jail or pay for that. So that so will be for the military. Summarize for us your thoughts on this 2019 elections. I mean, supplementary and the ones that were conducted before the supplementary elections. What do you think as a country, first and foremost, what do you think we need to do moving forward to take away this democracy that you and uh, our previous guests have said seems to be going back in reverse gear? Yeah, the, on the happy note is that the consciousness has grown appreciably. The consciousness for? For the voters okay. on the, has grown appreciably. Okay. They came out. And now you see the ownership uh, enthusiasm in them. Most of the elections, and then we are more or less at the verge of strengthening two-party dominant uh, structure, which is healthy for us. Then, on the other hand, those some seem to have been taken. And these issues that uh, we have to wait for almost two days for elections result, and then along the line, more often than not, uh, you hear about inconclusive election and going for supplementary. It is not healthy. 
and then the issue is that those who went for the election, if the election from 9 o'clock in the morning to 6 or thereabouts, yes, you declared it at the polling units. We have seen it. Why not within the wars and the local government announce and declare? And they move to the other area. Then we will see that because the party agents are there, observers are there. Is this accredited? The necessary forms are there. there. And these are the issues that have come up now. And some of the states, to be fair and honest with you, there are some states that are characteristically don't go for election. Where you have entries, but now they are all now coming out for what? For election. So it is moving. And after a time, we will be able to build, build on that, provided that we did not kill this enthusiasm by these manipulations or drawbacks. So that is the issue. We have learned it from this election. Nigerians are now enthusiastic. They have gathered the democratic momentum, or the electoral power is now within the people. Power now seems to belong to the people. But the people have to be convinced that it is what they have done what, what that now the vote is stronger, the ballot paper is stronger than the bullet. And that is the democratic mantra on which we have to go now. And the body which owns that responsibility to lead us to this promised land is the INEC, and which I am crying that it must now have what? An independent existence of itself being now reviewed critically and be entrenched on that independence. If you say that there's enthusiasm, then it, it cannot mean that, the, I mean, it, it doesn't follow that they, they, they we're on reverse gear. How then are we on reverse gear if there's enthusiasm? There's enthusiasm, but the enthusiasm has not been consummated to give the desired uh, result. The enthusiasm came up in the states where the elections were declared at the first instance. Did you see people uh, grumble? If you have a case, you go to what? You go to the tribunal. But now within the supplementary election, you see that basically all of them are vehemently contesting the supplementary election. So which shows that there is what? A drawback. And this is a new phenomenon inconclusive election, which has not been a part of us and which is now an, a worrisome development. Mm. So that gives it the regression or reverse standard. Oh, we'll see how that goes, this matter of inconclusive elections, whether they're good or they're, well, this may be the way of solving disputes. <laughs> but we have to thank you for coming on Sunrise Daily. Mr. Emmanuel Aigwanam is a legal practitioner, a political historian, and also a director at the African Institute for Parliamentary and Constitutional Studies. Sunrise Daily continues in a moment. Please stay with us.